everyone, it's Sarah Haynes with IPO Realty, and today I am going to be talking with Carolyn Polero, who is a mortgage broker at Mountain View Mortgages. So thanks for joining me, Carolyn. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I know you're super busy right now, so I appreciate you taking the time. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into mortgages, and sort of the history there. Okay. Um, I started banking when I was 19. I was a teller at one of the major financial institutions and then became a personal banker, financial advisor, and then moved on into a, a mortgage call center, which was my passion. Um, I did that for four years. I was also a team leader there, um, but didn't want to be traveling into Toronto every day in the, in the chaos, so decided to become a mortgage specialist with that particular bank. And I did that for a number of years. Um, and then I went to a uh, independent mortgage brokerage where I worked there for seven years. And um, about five years ago, decided to open my own brokerage with a partner. And so we're five years in and doing very well and mortgages is my passion. And I love helping people get into houses. So. There I am. Okay, so in terms of everything going on right now, um, let's first talk about rates. Like, what are we currently looking at with rates? I know people are hearing about like the Bank of Canada rates and all that, but what are mortgage rates sitting at typically? Right now? Okay, well, uh, so the Bank of Canada did drop their overnight rate, which affects prime rate. So anyone that's in a variable rate mortgage, uh, most lenders are at uh, prime uh, at prime rate at two point four five percent. Uh, so your discount would be prime minus whatever in the past. Going forward right now, the lenders are offering prime plus. So we're looking at a range of prime plus 0 0.05 to 0.25% above prime, depending on whether you're purchasing or refinancing. Uh, fixed rates are ranging right now on a five-year fixed at 2.79 to uh, 3.44. Again, depending on uh, the lender, the um, if you're refinancing or if you're purchasing, if your amortization is 25 years or 30 years, your rate can uh, vary depending on that. So with everything else going on, like what are you seeing the most inquiries about right now? Are people, like what are they doing? Some clients asking about mortgage deferrals. Lenders are offering mortgage deferrals to people that currently have mortgages and they can defer typically up to three months right now and then some are actually offering a six months deferral so um, i'm i do have some calls about that and i'm referring clients back to their lenders um, they can check the websites um, for the lender even if you just type your lender's name and covid 19 it will take you to the appropriate spot and you can see how that lender is going to handle your deferral and how they'd like to communicate I do recommend emailing or filling out the forms that the lenders have uh, just so that um, you're not clogging up the phone lines because they are busy. A lot of people are calling and it's just, you're, you'll be on hold for a long time. So I suggest going in that way and just being patient. So there's those calls. I do have um, clients that had purchased. Um, so we're working on those, completing those files. I have, um, I do have clients that are still house hunting. So just keeping track of their rates on their pre-approvals. Some refinancing. Yeah, there are a lot of people thinking about refinancing or opening lines of credit right now. Just kind of, is there a surge of that? Just kind of that rainy day option? I don't have a surge of it. I've had some questions about it. Um, not a surge yet. I, I think a, lo a lot of the lenders are really helping out by giving the mortgage deferral program, which is... Uh, saving people a lot of money um, per month right now. People are traveling, so they're not spending money on gas. They're not going out, so they're spending a little bit less money than they normally would. Um, and the government programs, uh, if they're on EI and or the CREB um, benefit, then it seems that I, I think people are managing, which is kind of nice to to know. And we're I think we're really lucky to be in Canada that our government is supporting the population this way. Are you seeing anyone like new applying, like kind of hearing about the rates and want to lock things in or like for a lot of us, our buyers have sort of like are waiting it out. Are you seeing new people entering like the mortgage 
approval process? Um, I do have some people that are looking to figure out how much they qualify and, and kind of lining themselves up for when things maybe settle down. Um, but again, there are people that do require housing uh, that, that need to buy a house to live in. They don't have anywhere to go. So there is still that going on right now. Now with the, the rates, which are pretty good, what kind of time frame can people lock in for? Uh, right now, 120 days. So four months. What is your new process? I mean, I've gone through the process a few times of getting a mortgage with you, but what kind of things look differently for you with, with COVID? Like how you're dealing with clients, like what they can expect if they do need your services? Like what does that look like right now? Well, right now we're doing everything remotely. So we could hop on a Zoom call. Um, a lot of people are comfortable emailing, texting, phone calls. So that's how we're kind of getting started. Um, I have a secure online application that people can complete that uploads into my mortgage system, which is great. Uh, documents can be scanned, emailed, text, uh, however uh, they can get the documents to me. So uh, that's, that's what we're doing there. Also, most lenders are accepting e-signatures. So we're using DocuSign or e-signatures with uh, some of the technology we have. Yeah, because I know the lawyer last week said they still haven't transitioned to that. So mortgage brokers are, like, we're good with it. You guys are also good with the electronic signature? Most lenders are. There's a couple of documents that we just need pen to paper, but typically DocuSign e-signatures are just fine. Okay, so is there anything else that people should be thinking about with everything going on or any major changes that are, are notable to discuss? Like there's so many questions around mortgages and what's going to happen. Yep. Um, so number one, don't just not pay your mortgage. That is a big no, no, because uh, then you, it's going to uh, show as a default and go on to your credit rating. You need to contact the lenders and ask them to defer your mortgage payments 100%. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. They're just going to tack those payments onto the back end. It's not like when this is over, all of a sudden you have to make three mortgage payments. Your payments will just resume accordingly. And those, you know, your amortization will be extended another three months or six months, depending on how long this goes. Make sure that you make your minimum payments on credit cards. I think most of the lenders are allowing you to kind of skip a minimum payment on your credit card or your lines of credit. Um, if there's any cash flow issues and you're not working, the best thing is to go to your lender and ask for some support. They're really uh, trying to help people as much as possible. So I definitely recommend that versus just not paying. You want to protect your credit rating. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw some stuff going around about like, if you do defer, it could impact your credit score. Is that just like false news? Yeah, that's fake news. I thought so. Deferring does not affect your credit rating. So really the only time you are going to run into a credit issue is if you don't advise them that you want to defer and you just stop paying your mortgage. That's right. That's what's going to affect your credit rating on, and, and any credit facility. You're better off to ask yeah. your bank for some help. Uh, before uh, just skipping uh, or sorry, just avoiding making that a payment. You want to make sure they've approved you to, to, um, to skip that payment. I just want to let everybody know that EI and the CREB benefit is not income that we can use for an application on a mortgage going forward. So that's something to think about. As of March 25th, if you had an approved application in at a lender, and you have lost your job, most of the lenders are still proceeding as if you do have your job. So if you have purchased a home, there is a very good chance that mortgage will fund and close. They don't want to put people out of a home because of the situation. So that's really important to know. Um, if you are refinancing, the lender does um, have the right, they could pull an application because uh, you're in an industry where you're not employed um, so that is something that is possible. It's just, you know, the nature, it could just be a postponement of that refinance uh, going forward. Okay. So I know there's lots of questions and lots to cover. So where's the best place if people do want to reach out and have specific questions about their options or mortgage products, where's the best place for them to kind of reach you? You can always uh, have 
clients email me at carolyn at calero team.com or they can call my uh, number at 905-873-0128 and leave me a message okay so i just want to thank you so much for taking this time i know you're exceptionally swamped right now so i really appreciate you passing along this information in a future date, we're gonna do more about overview of mortgages. So I look forward to that chat, but right now this is really crucial to get some information out while people are going through this. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. And uh, thanks for always servicing my clients so wonderfully. And thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate you having me here. And um, if anyone needs anything, just give me a shout. Perfect, thanks, Carolyn.